You guys have been asking for this one for a long, 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 Needs no introduction. So let's jump right into it. So the first thing I'm starting out with is a shovel. If you want, you can just use like a steel pipe for this part, but I chose to go with a shovel because it just comes with all these other resources that I can utilize. Like there's uh, the scoop part that I can use as like a cool shoulder plate or I can make it into the visor for a helmet. Uh, then there's the handle that I can use as like a uh, handle on something else. Uh, so yeah, for five bucks, this was a good deal for me. But what I'm after right now is this steel pipe right here. And I'm only bringing this up because I know someone else is probably gonna bring it up. Sure, if you want to, go ahead and cut the shape of a spear out from the shovel scoop. And then, go ahead, have fun with the weirdest, dumbest, curviest spearhead of all time. Uh, and if you would even take the time to hammer that flat, if you can somehow manage to hammer flat a tempered steel shovel scoop. If you would really rather do that than just put some extra work into this and come out with a really, really nice spear that is also completely functional, you're kind of on the wrong channel right now. First, I gotta cut one of the ends off of this rivet so I can pull it out of the other side, and then I'll be able to take the head off the shovel. I'm gonna use my angle grinder for this, but if you don't have one, you can use a hacksaw. Haha, <laughs> April Fool's on you, it was actually two little nails and not just one solid rivet going through the whole entire thing, which I totally knew the whole entire time, which is why I didn't just spend the last 45 minutes trying to pull this piece out because I cut the end off of it thinking that this was just one continuous piece that I would be able to pull out of this end once I cut this end off. <laughs> Gotcha. So now that the joke's over, we're going to make our cut right here. Again, I'm using the angle grinder, but you can use a hacksaw. So we've got the tube. Now here's the hard part. I'm going to be cutting the blade for the spear out of a lawnmower blade. Now I'm using a lawnmower blade because the metal is thick, it's tempered, and because of that, it's really, really strong. And that's going to be really necessary for the huge impact forces that this is going to be going through when it hits stuff. So you can pretty much freestyle this part. The only thing you got to watch out for is to make sure that the bottom part of the spearhead can fit into the small end of the tube. So I've got this design drawn out. The tang, or whatever you would call it on a spearhead, is about an inch wide and three inches long. And then the blade is about eight inches. initial shape. Now, since this is a spear made only for thrusting, we're only going to have to blade these two edges right here, because you'll notice after this initial wedge, it doesn't get any wider. So these are the only two edges that have to do any cutting. This section right here is really just like an extension to carry the two bladed edges deeper into the target. If you really want to blade these two edges, you can go ahead and do it. Like, it's not going to reduce the effectiveness of the weapon at all, but it's not really going to increase it either, because like I said, these two edges forcing themselves into the target is really the only thing that's going to do any cutting, because this doesn't get any wider. Really the only other reason that you would want to blade the edges of this is if it was a weapon that you were using for swinging, but for spears specifically, you're not really going to want to swing them, because the length of them makes it really difficult to keep track of the angle that your blade is at. So so even on target practice, let alone in an actual fight, you might end up swinging the weapon and just smacking the flat side of the blade up against your target and possibly breaking off the spearhead. So the smartest thing is just to use it for thrusting, and if you're just using it for thrusting, you don't have to blade this edge. So I'm going to do the initial bevel with my belt sander, and then I'm going to do the final sharpening with the whetstone that I've got soaking right now. Sorry I didn't bring this up sooner. Everybody knows you're supposed to wear safety goggles and safety glasses, but something I really want to stress as well is a dust mask. I never thought they were a big deal. I thought uh, they were just uncomfortable. I didn't think it was worth wearing them, but I recently got iron poisoning. Luckily, I didn't get it way, way, way too bad, but even still, I was like throwing up. I was nauseous for days on end, and I know that some of the more advanced stages of iron poisoning or heavy metal poisoning, especially if you grind galvanized metal, can be really, really serious. Uh, it's caused by just ingesting too much iron through like breathing it in and uh, swallowing it. So next time you're at Home Depot buying uh, your lawnmower blades or your whatever, uh, just make sure to throw in an extra five bucks and grab a pack of dust masks. 
So here's how it looks all beveled and sharpened, and I also removed the black coating on it too. For more information on the beveling and the sharpening, go ahead and watch my how to make a knife tutorial. Uh, but now we gotta work on the spear shaft. So I'm gonna be using this pine rod because it's the only thing I have available to me right now, but I hear that one of the best woods you can use for this is ash. But I would just really suggest that you do a little bit of research to find out what is the best wood for you to use, uh, just as far as availability and effectiveness. Then just make sure there's no cracks in the wood, and as far as the length of it though, I'm pretty sure you can just do whatever you want, but I'm gonna go with a foot longer than my height. So this should end up being about three feet long. I've got it cut down to size, now I'm just going to measure the length of that steel pipe that we got from the shovel and then I've got to taper this until this can fit onto it. I'm just going to use every single woodworking tool that I own until I find what works the best and then I'll let you know. So I found that the planer works pretty well for this. I'm sure the belt sander would have been a lot better but my family's sleeping and I don't want to bug them. So you just prop your pine rod or whatever kind of wood you got up against something then scratch away at it until you're a few years older and by that time your steel pipe should be able to fit on the end of it. I've still got a little bit more to go, there's about that much left, but I made progress. So it came out from the top a little bit, that's fine. Now what I'm going to do is mark with a sharpie a horizontal line in reference to those holes that had the nails in them. Now super carefully I'm going to use a jigsaw to cut a 3 inch line down the shaft. I got that end clamped up in the vise and then this end is just hanging off the table. To make the space wide enough so that you can get the tang into the pole, you just cut a couple lines right here and then you use a drill right here to get this little piece out. Actually, just kidding. I just discovered that it's a lot more effective to just cut the initial line as a guide and then drop your drill bit into it and just rock it back and forth to widen the hole. looking like and if you try to put the spearhead in by hand you can only get it to about right here and this is what you want because when you put it in for the final time you're gonna want to have to pound it in to get it all the way down there so that it can be as tight as possible so now I'm gonna mix up some of this high strength epoxy and then coat the wood in it and then I'm gonna take the steel pipe and put it on making sure to pay attention to where the hole is and where the line is and after I put it on then I'm going to coat the tang of the head in the epoxy as well, which I just roughed up a little bit with my angle grinder to give the epoxy a little bit more to hold on to. And then I'm just going to insert it into here and then pound it in the rest of the way. 